Emergency personnel. What's the dumbest situation you've been dispatched to? Story 1. I got called one night for an elderly woman at a nursing home with two broken ankles after an unwitnessed fall. We arrived, expecting the usual nursing home mess that no one knows how it happened. But no, her patient was just sitting there on the edge of her bed and smiling. So we've got that going for us, which is nice. The patient was about as pleasant as anyone can be. At that point, the stereotypically unenthusiastic LPN materialized just long enough to hand me paperwork before vanishing into the ether. According to the papers, the patient has the usual history of diabetes, dementia, hypertension, and kidney disease. Most of your usual nursing home stuff. Based on my initial assessment, all of her vitals were stable. She was in no apparent distress. She's also a very sweet little old lady who still thinks that Nixon is president and is quite eager to voice her disapproval of this unfortunate fact, but was otherwise happy to answer my questions. So I asked her, are your feet okay? Good as ever, I suppose. Did you fall? Oh, no. Are you in any pain? No. What should I be? Do you have any idea where your nurse called us to take you to the hospital? Oh, now how in blazes would I know that? Good point. So I asked her if she could stand up, and she did. I asked her if she could walk, and she did. I asked her if anything hurts or anywhere, and she said no. Now, fully realizing the struggle ahead, I suddenly grumbled off to find the nurse again while my partner sat with our patient. I found the nurse and informed her that the patient was in no distress and had no complaint at the time. I asked her if she'd like us to cancel the transport and disregard the call. Predictably, she told me the patient's legs are obviously and severely rotated externally, which meant she must have fallen. And the fact that I don't know that means, of course, that I am some type of idiot. So I asked her if she had any other information. She then spent the next several minutes supplying me with the usual line we lowly ambulance monkeys typically receive from nursing home staff. This isn't my unit. She's not my patient. I've been on vacation. It was like that when I got here. I just started. I'm filling in for someone else. That patient's new, etc. Eventually, I walked back to the patient's room and got her. I helped her into the first nearby wheelchair we could find, and off we went down the hall to the nurse's station, where we were met less than enthusiastically. Can you tell me what's wrong again, just for my report? And also so we can inform our patient what is currently transpiring. Are you an idiot? Her ankles are obviously broken. Can you see her toes aren't even pointing the right way? Are you sure? Yes, look at it. Actually, look, both ankles are completely backwards. Um, okay, but do you want to have one more look for yourself just to be sure that they're really broken and that she doesn't have her shoes on the wrong goddamn feet? This dude should have told that nurse, you shouldn't have called the wee-woo. You should have called the tow truck. Story 2. Well, last year, we had someone who had noticed water coming out of his toilet one evening and decided that the best course of action was to have us, volunteer fire department, come out. Now we're happy to help when there's actual flooding. I've pumped out my share of basements in the last few years. In this case, we're talking about a backed-up toilet and maybe half an inch of water in one room. The guy called emergency services. We tried to explain to him that this is a job for a plumber, not the fire department. He insisted, so we got called. Fifteen-plus people got called away from their families or sleep or whatever, suit up, filled two trucks, and drove over there. One of us got out, talked to the guy, took a quick look at the bathroom, informed him that he should call a plumber, got back in the truck, and home we went. I'm not quite sure what the town charges for our time right now, but I'd have loved to see that guy's face when he got the bill. It's a toss-up between that and the story I posted before. Still the most absurd thing that's happened in 10 years of being a volunteer firefighter. A few years ago, at about 8 a.m. on a weekday morning, I was just getting ready to leave for university when my alarm went off. I ran the 100 meters to the station, grabbed my uniform, and tried to find out what had happened. Apparently, someone had called in because his bedroom was on fire. All right, we drove there, and from the smoke coming out of the windows, it's pretty obvious that this wasn't a prank call. We had a couple of those at the time, so we didn't necessarily expect an actual fire until we saw it. The front door of the house was open, but the guy who called the fire in was nowhere in sight. Well, we were not going to wait around while the house was on fire. Me and another guy grabbed our gear and went into the house, wearing full SCBA. The fire was upstairs, there was still no one in sight. We reached the bedroom and luckily, only the bed was on fire. We doused the mattress and dragged it out to the balcony and threw it down into the yard. They made sure that there were no embers anywhere, etc. We're just leaving the room and were greeted by a man wearing nothing but a towel, asking if we're finished because he had to get his clothes and get ready for work. Apparently, this guy was the owner of the house. He had woken up early and gone for a morning jog while his wife had made breakfast. He returned, they ate together, she left, and he went upstairs to shower and get dressed for work. As it turned out, his wife smokes in bed and had been somewhat careless with her morning cigarette. Now when he saw the smoke coming out of the bedroom, he did the rational thing and called the fire department. Then, however, instead of going outside, he went into the shower, shaved, etc., so he wouldn't be late for work. Ignoring the sirens and us calling for him, we figured we'd be able to find the fire ourselves. As it turned out, all his efforts were for nothing, as he was going to be late for work after all. The EMTs decided to take him to the hospital because, as it turns out, inhaling smoke is bad for you. Bonus story. One evening, we'd been called out to a car accident. The driver didn't notice a roundabout and jumped over it, flipped his car, and got back to the station at about 11 p.m. 
we decided to have a quick beer before going home, which turned into two or three beers, so we were just getting ready to leave at about 1 a.m. when the alarm went off again. It turns out a truck went too fast through a construction zone and was now lying on its side. We got there close to the road, made sure the driver was okay, etc. It quickly became clear that we were not going to be able to put the truck on its wheels by ourselves, so two large cranes were called. We're informed that that's going to take a few hours, but we need to unload the trailer anyway since it's going to be too heavy otherwise. It was an open-top trailer filled with about 25 tons of turnips. A third or so had already spilled out, but the only way to unload the rest was by hand. Shovels proved to be useless, so we spent the next two hours sitting on a shrinking pile of turnips, throwing them out one by one. I eventually got home at about 8 a.m. and called out of work due to turnip-related fatigue. Shh, here's a little secret for you. This video is sponsored by none other than me and my team at Rufus Rugs. We're the masters of creating custom, hand-tufted rugs that capture who you truly are. Whether you want to transform one of our intriguing thumbnails into a rug, for a friend, obviously, or you're craving a room makeover with awesome anime-inspired designs, we've got your back. Oh, and did I mention, each and every rug is skillfully handcrafted by me and my friends. No BS dropshipping gimmick here. You'll be blown away by your rug. Hit the first link in the description to learn more. Story 3. Cop here. I got dispatched to a woman in labor at 3 a.m. I arrived on scene and realized I'd been there before with social services because the neighbors had smelled the apartment through the walls because of all the buildup of garbage. I got into the place and the lady's running around with nothing but a Motley Crue t-shirt on and she's screaming that the baby's coming out. Bear in mind that this gal looks like a yeti and it smells like one took a dump in the middle of the apartment. I knew right then that I wasn't going to get down there and play catcher. My germaphobe partner is standing with his hands as close to himself as possible, trying not to touch anything and said, Wait, I got this. How far apart are your contractions? She said, about three minutes? I asked him, what does that mean? He said with a blank look in his face, I don't know, I saw it on TV. It was about negative degrees Fahrenheit out the morning, so I told Labor Yeti that she should probably put some pants on because the ambulance was on its way. She grabbed a pair of vintage Zubas out of the closet next to the door and put them on. I went upstairs to get her daughter ready to go to the hospital as the ambulance members arrived. They head out the door with Labor Yeti, and all of a sudden, I heard that they're en route to the hospital with mom and baby. I got to the hospital and asked one of the EMTs what happened as he's hosing out the ambulance and he said that she lifted up her leg to step into the ambulance. She stopped and said, something fell out, and all of a sudden they heard crying. They rushed her into the ambulance, got the baby out of the Zubaz, and got her to the hospital. And bam, the story of the sweatpants baby was created. Story 4. Firefighter and 911 dispatcher here. I, once as a dispatcher, took a call for suspicious activity. What was suspicious? There was a bicycle in the front yard of her neighbor's home. She told me, I've never seen a bike there before and it just seemed weird. We didn't even bother to dispatch that one. As a firefighter, once during a huge rainstorm, we were dispatched for a vehicle in the water. This intelligent gentleman has decided to try to cross a river that is several feet high in a small Toyota car. With his girlfriend in the vehicle, he drove into the water and predictably got stuck. He immediately jumped out and swam to shore, leaving her standing in the trunk with a vehicle stuck at an angle upward in the water. As we got his girlfriend out, he tried to pass it off as her fault. She slapped him and none of us said a word about it. Another time, we were called for a police assist. When we arrived on scene, the officer directed us to the guy in the back of his cruiser. The guy showed us his finger and said it hurts. The finger is covered in a paper towel with a rubber band. He had just been walking around with his hurt finger for a couple days and just decided when he was being arrested that that was the time to deal with it. That dude had some serious escape plans. He thought he'd trade jail time for a hospital stay. If you are curious about his uncanny strategy, hit the like button and subscribe for more entertaining stories. Story 5 my very first call at my very first post as a new EMT was to a small rural town fire service about 50 miles outside of a city. It had been a slow day, a slow evening, a slow night, not a dang thing happened. At about 4 a.m. tones dropped. I am deep asleep, but I flew out of the bunk, put on my boots, raced downstairs, and hopped in the back of the ambulance. I was new and still waiting to be cleared, so I was the third in the truck. They lit it up and hauled it out of the bay. About 10 seconds later, they pulled over into the parking lot of a convenience store. There were two cops, lights were flashing everywhere, and the fire truck pulled in behind us. Fire always went along on calls. Mind you, I've been awake for only like two minutes at that point. The lights, the noise, it being dark, all of that was incredibly disorienting. The medic on the rig was a surly, no-nonsense woman who didn't really suffer fools at all. She approached the cops and they pointed to a small man who was just standing there. She approached him and asked him what was up. He started to talk to her and she interrupted him and said, Are you baked? Yes, ma'am. What did you take? Ice. What's the problem? My pecker is about to fall off. You what now? He whispered very loudly, My pecker is falling off. Why is your... Why is it about to fall off? I shot up down there. You did what now? I administered myself down there. Wh why? I wanted to see what it was like. At this point, I was looking around like I had stepped through the looking glass. 
What is happening here? The cops were doing everything they could not to bust out laughing. Then she said, So you think your thing is about to fall off? Then she lit up down there with a flashlight. He was wearing jeans and there wasn't any blood. As soon as she did that, he started unbuckling his belt. Here, look. Nope, nope, don't. Don't even. Just get in the back. No, not on the cot. Sit on the bench. Ned, get his vitals. I can't lay down on the cot? Nope. The hospital is less than a mile from here. They'll take care of you. I got the vitals and we dropped him off. He was tripping, but was very polite and respectful. It was really an odd experience. We found out later that he was a schizophrenic who was off his meds with a really cruel girlfriend who talked him into stuff like that. I guess for me, it's less about the dumb stuff and more about how often you find yourself in supremely surreal situations. You could spend 30 minutes working on a code with no luck and the tearful family is crying, hugging you, and thanking you. Thanking you for not being able to save their loved one? What? Or a little old lady that's lonely and calls every night with difficulty breathing, just so someone will stop by. This is a true story. They had a nightly dollar square on when she would call. Or an elderly World War II vet that walks up to the station with a bag of groceries for the department, then says he's been having chest pains and wants you to look at him and that he decided to make an excuse to walk up here rather than risking upsetting his sick wife and bothering us over nonsense. Some of it is funny, but to be honest, when you break it down, it's usually pretty heartbreaking. You just kind of look for the humor when you can find it to cope with always seeing people in what is often one of the worst moments of their lives. Story 6 I was dispatched to a child with seizures who had a history of epilepsy. I got on scene and the kid was coming out of his seizure and was postictal. I packaged the kid up for transport to the hospital and his mother was screaming at me that he must have his peanut butter balls. Not sure what she meant. I asked her what she was referring to. His peanut butter balls. He has to have them. I have them in a jar. Here, take these peanut butter balls to the hospital. She hands me a small medicine container. I looked at the label and read that it is a phenobarbital, a common anti-seizure medication. I asked the mom if this is what she meant by peanut butter balls. Apparently, she never read the medicine bottle label and misheard the doctor pronouncing phenobarbital as peanut butter balls. Story 7. I was dispatched to an unconscious person at a bus station. When I showed up on the scene, it turned out to be just a homeless dude sleeping. I asked him if he wanted to go to the hospital and explained that they wouldn't really do anything but give him a place to stay for a few hours and that he'd get some food. Guy said yeah, so we started talking about his history. Any chronic medical conditions? Nope. Do you take any medications? Nope. Any medication allergies that you know of? Yeah, I'm allergic to psych meds. Uh, how exactly do you know you're allergic to psych meds? Some doctor decided I'm bipolar and schizophrenic, but that ain't true. It looks like you should be in the hospital. That emergency personnel at least now knows where the man was allergic to psych meds. It must have tasted bad. Story 8. 911 call for a four-year-old who had a nightmare. The parents called specifically for a nightmare, and that was how the dispatch went out. Not troubled breathing, not possible seizure, etc. Unconscious child. Arrived on scene to find a kid laying down on the floor in a store. No history, full day of school, was running around the store being a brat when he was reprimanded, promptly fell out. Definitely responsive to pain, pupils are good, so I loudly announced we're going to have to stick him with needles and draw some blood, give him fluids. Patient regained consciousness and tried to run away. Unconscious diabetic, got on scene and there's a woman lying on the couch with sugar sprinkled on her. The woman's son knew it was a problem with low sugar and figured he'd try to help. It would have been super cute except the kid was young. Please, everyone, educate those around you if you have chronic health problems that can become emergencies. One patient that wasn't mine but came in on another unit while we were waiting for triage, a young male who couldn't get it up with his girlfriend, insisted that nothing like that could ever happen so something must be wrong. They called 911, got transported, made it to the triage, and got promptly sent out to the lobby. The nurse, as they're walking away, says to us, Someone needs to show that girl how to use her mouth. Story 9 When I was a newspaper reporter, we all had to carry the police scanner, which was hacked to get scrambled channels, and we'd be dispatched to accidents, homicides, fires, etc., pretty much everything. I thought I'd seen pretty much everything after a decade of this, when we got a call one day for robbery on robbery. Apparently, a guy on a bus moved to the front and, when he reached his stop, robbed the bus driver. He stepped off the bus carrying the money and was immediately robbed by a random mugger who hit him over the head. The police later determined there was no relationship between the two men at all. This was in a particularly bad part of town, near our old NHL area, and I remember just shaking my head all the way back to the newsroom, thinking, I have officially now seen it all. Story 10. Dispatched to the illness of a 90-some-odd-year-old woman, she stated that she had eaten two bites of leftovers and then realized they were leftovers and wanted us to induce vomiting. We are a basic life support unit. We don't do that, which we explained and her angry daughter freaked out and was yelling at the mother about how she made the EMTs come all the way out here and now she's going to go with us to the hospital to get her stomach pumped at the hospital. We stopped her right there and explained that the hospital isn't going to perform a painful and unnecessary procedure over eating leftovers. It ended up being a refusal and we didn't take her to the hospital. Also in my city, units were dispatched to reports of something in a dumpster in the wee hours of the morning. Upon arrival, they discovered that it was actually a Justin Bieber standee. I wonder if they resuscitated Justin's cutout. Story 11. 
Paged at 3 a.m. for an ill person, so I'm already tired and being sent to something vague isn't what I wanted. Arrived on scene and walked to the front door. Middle-aged guy opened the door and looked absolutely terrified. He rushed us in and we asked what's going on. He replied, I have the hiccups. My partner and I were exhausted from a rough 24-hour shift and we were incredibly confused. We asked him to clarify and he explained that in his 40-odd years of life, he's never had a case of the hiccups and was absolutely positive his life was in danger. We did our assessment and then explained that it's normal and really doesn't require the ER, much less us. He demanded that we take him to the ER, so we obliged. When I called in the report, the hospital asked me to repeat the chief complaint three times. We were kicked to triage the second we walked in by some very annoyed nurses. Luckily, they understood that we cannot refuse transport if the patient has a complaint and wanted to go. The dude was absolutely fine. Story 12 I got called for a woman experiencing stomach pain, which she calmly claimed was a 10 out of 10. She must have been quite the trooper since her husband drove her 30 minutes across the country, past the hospital and two urgent care centers, to let her mom look at it before calling the wee woo. For someone who had been having unprotected relations for seven months, she sure was confident she wasn't pregnant. The nurse who had to explain to her the way these things work was right in the corner of amused and irritated, and her complaint of upper left quadrant pain was just the baby kicking. Oh man, the nurse should have said with a straight face, I am sorry to deliver the bad news to you, but you have a transmitted parasite, aka the baby. Story 13 Dispatched for a very strange gas-like smell in the backyard, we got there and walked around with our seniors, all levels were normal. Well, miss, everything is normal. What's that smell then? She asked. All we smell is some mulch. She exclaimed, Is that what that smell is? They just had mulch put in behind us yesterday. How long is that smell going to be around? Are we going to have to keep our windows closed for that long? I'm sure I could come up with many more, but that one sticks out. Story 14. I got called for a child whose grandfather, and legal guardian, was actively mistreating her. Notes said screaming and crying were heard in the background, as well as, don't hit me again, and he's trying to end me. Turns out she had snuck to go see her boyfriend, who was eight years older than her, and came back buzzed and stoned, and when her grandfather tried to punish her by taking her phone and grounding her, she tried to attack him. In the process of disarming her, he pushed her backwards and into a table, knocking a lamp over. At that point, she grabbed a phone, barricaded herself in a room, and called 911. Story 15 during one of my 24-hour ambulance shifts for EMT basic training, we got a call to a big lots for a laceration on a finger. It was essentially a piece of paper cut from the rough edge of a chipped candle. I got to practice my EMT skills by applying direct pressure to a non-bleeding index finger. I even got to put a band-aid on it. The girl was acting like she could not look at her finger and was going to pass out. The gauze strip I held in her finger didn't even have a speck of red on it. Don't worry, she sued. Seriously, she did. She sued big lots. I think she just called us because it will help her case. Story 16 I got a 911 call from an elderly man who was pulseless and not breathing from his adult daughter. The caller stated that they had been having a barbecue at Grandpa's house when Grandpa said he was tired and went inside. Grandpa's granddaughter found him unresponsive in his recliner and ran outside screaming. 911 was attempting to coach the daughter through CPR, but she was having none of it. The ambulance rolled out with lights and sirens, the engine rolled out behind, and halfway to the scene, we got the call to cancel. Apparently, Grandpa was having a nap. He did not pass away. He was just taking a nap. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy Pawn Shop Workers. What's the dumbest thing a customer has brought in? Story 4 is so wild. See you on that video.